Today's dedication is for Zahn, who gave me a very generous one year's worth of subscriptions on Patreon. Lord Skitter versus Valrath, and uh, <laughs> that's a pretty funny opening hand, so we'll keep it. I did say in the uh, in the lobby that I want my opponents to bring like fun decks around power level 5, because this is not a good deck, but it is a fun one, hopefully. Uh, okay, we get into a second land, so that's pretty good going. Hopefully my opponent doesn't feel slighted by seeing a Jeweled Lotus when I just said that I want fun games here. But I mean, it's Lord Skitter, so... I don't see what we're going to do here that's all that um, all that efficient and effective. Go for the rat colony on turn one as well. All right, and yeah, okay. That's fair enough. I mean, like I said, for transparency's sake, I don't expect much from this deck. Yeah, if our opponent had played that out for another few turns, he would have seen that Like that's pretty much all we're doing there. Let's see if we can draw no we would have drawn a couple more from the signing blood and then one during the draw phase as well but i mean at the end of the day a board wipe sorts out a rat colony deck so yeah i'm not that hopeful for this deck but we'll try again okay so we'll try again i think you're going to see in this game judging by this hand um just how casual this deck has been built we're up against urza lord high artificer i know a lot of people think that that commander is automatically not casual but I'm of the belief that any commander can be built casually. So we'll see what our opponent's got for us here. A Terramorphic Expanse in a mono blue deck. And we draw into another land, so just drop that and pass. And it's a reality chip for our opponent. A Gix is good once all the tokens get going, so... Might as well just throw out a Rat Colony here, I think. Foundry Inspector makes artifacts cost less and makes it more difficult for us to swing in with the Rat Colony, but I think we'll do it anyway. Draw into another rat colony, which I'll try to save for the thrumming stone. We've only got 30... No, we have 20 rat colonies in this deck, which isn't enough for a rat colony deck, really. Especially if you're running things like thrumming stone, but we... Um, let me just get through this here so I can think about what I'm saying. Uh, so, exile the Terramorphic Expense, which I assume is in our opponent's deck for a reason. Otherwise, why would you play it? And... Okay, were we in the attacking phase there? Too much talking, too much thinking. I would have swung in the Rat Colony towards the Foundry Inspector there. I don't think he would have blocked anyway. So what was I saying? Yeah, you'd want more Rat Colonies in the deck, really. I couldn't decide whether to go for a generic, like, token-making um, mono-black control build with this, similar to Jadar, is it called? Or if to go for a Rat Colony, Relentless Rats, Tribal List, so... Obviously, we've decided on Rat Colony, but I've gone for a little bit of a mixture of both. Uh, we draw into an Ancient Tomb, which can take us straight into the Thrumming Stone. Our opponent got down Thran Dynamo into Basalt Monolith. So, yeah, I think we're fine to go through to combat here. Gonna make another Rat Token. Nothing to exile in the bin. And we go through with a 5-1. No point throwing away a Rat Token, because they literally just buff up the Rat Colonies here. And they'll buff up the Pack Rats as well. So yeah, our opponent was going to take it. We missed out on four points of damage last turn, which hopefully isn't relevant. Uh, speaking of damage, we'll take two to the Ancient Tomb into the Artifact. Our opponent brings out Urza, and we'll be able to make some more blue mana. Comes in with a 5-5 Construct. Tapping down the Basalt Monolith for three colourless as opposed to blue. And there is a Jorios Familiar, so their Artifacts are going to cost two less now. And then reconfiguring the chip onto the commander means that they can play lands and cast spells from the top. So we saw a, an arcane lighthouse there. All right, another rat colony. That gives us more chance of doubling up our rats here. So do we encourage our opponent to block with something? Would be nice to get down the Gix, but I don't think we're going to get through anyway. So we just have to try and bombard our opponent with rats, I think. Take two more damage and we'll go for a rat colony. Ripple 4, thanks to the Thrumming Stone, we reveal the top three cards, and yeah, this making a better Rat Colony deck than I thought it might. Nothing there. Skull Clamp, couple of lands, and Iara, so whiff on that. Yeah, I wasn't sure if to go for the Rat Colony thing with this deck, because I've done Rat Colony a few times on the channel, but uh, I do love the, like, the lore, or the allure of the Lord Skitter. It reminds me, if anyone's seen Hilda from either the comic strip or the Netflix series, there's a character on that called the Rat King, which is probably taken from law from other European countries or something, but yeah, it reminds me of that. Have you 
secrets to trade with the Rat King. Secrets? Anyway, go for the Rat Colony again and see if we can actually get into one this time. Uh, yeah, we do get into one. That is a Duress and a Costly Plunder as well. And so the Rat Colony that you get from the Ripple has Ripple as well. The other cards go on the bottom in any order. We don't care. And yeah, whiffing on that as well. You'd want like 30 Rat Colonies in a Rat Colony deck really so that you don't whiff on the Thrumming Stone. But I'm kind of straddling two different tactics here, like I said. So put those on the bottom. All I really wanted to do was buff this Rat Colony enough to make it a difficult block for our opponent. We would be exiling a lot of stuff from our opponent's graveyard as well if that was relevant but it is not at the moment go through to combat make another rat token and now our colonies are nine ones so maybe going for like relentless rats so it buffs up the toughness as well so we can actually keep our rats in play would be a good idea just kind of sussing out what i want to do with this commander i don't imagine it'll be all that popular a one so i didn't put all that much effort into this deck to be honest Getting our opponent to block with the Inspector. Of course, our opponent has a Cyclonic Rift. And there's a Grim Monolith as well. I wonder if our opponent actually read the caveat to the game or not. We're going to take a big chunk of life here. The Construct is currently a 6-6. And there's a Research Thief as well. Whenever an artifact creature you control deals combat damage, draw a card. So they've got potential card advantage from the Reality Chip. But they'll be able to hit us for 2 uh, with two creatures, now a 7-7. Seven, seven. Uh, so that is 10 damage dealt to us, draw two cards. And this is what I mean in the previous game when I said we got off to that really, really fast start. All it takes is a board wipe to switch us off. Uh, speaking of which, there's a Meat Hook Massacre, so maybe we go for a board wipe ourselves here. Not quite enough swamps to make the Cabal Stronghold relevant. I don't have Cabal Coffers in here because it's 1v1 and I think it will be too slow. But yeah, the... Uh, Construct will be a 1, 2, 3, 4, a 5, 5. These things will go down. I'm just trying to work out how much we put into the Meat Hook Massacre. Yeah, that just means we put 5 into it, doesn't it? So we'll just tap out into the Meat Hook Massacre. Hope our opponent doesn't have free counter magic. It does enter. And that wipes out the entire board. We gain 4 life. And this does not die, it just falls off the Urza because it was an equipment. They can easily get down their commander again though. Yeah, as you can probably tell from the Meat Hook Massacre, I did go for a bit of an Aristocrats build because I assumed that the tokens were going to be dying a lot because they just want ones that can't block, so we can just turn them into the red zone. And if they die, then so be it. So it's kind of like an Aristocrats Rat Colony build. <laughs> okay, there's another huge spell in Metal Worker. Our opponent's only got two cards in hand, so it's not as good as it could be. can still afford his commander, but looks like he's holding up mana. So maybe looking to counter the Thrumming Stone? Okay, if he counters Thrumming Stone, we've got Necropotence at least, so... If Gix isn't going to do the job, Necropotence will. Yeah, let's... We've got a Swamp, an additional Swamp now, so we can tap down three lands to make four Black Mana. So, yeah, I don't suppose it matters if we go for Thrumming Stone, but... We'll try it here, try and bait out some counter magic. Okay, that lands, so we'll just go straight in for a Rat Colony again, try our luck. And looks as though we are whiffing on that. Two lilies on top of the library. And we've got Plum the Forbidden, which is a bit too late. Toxic Deluge, we've already wiped the board. So no additional rat colonies for us. Yeah, so you can let me know in the comments section, would you rather see... I mean, the very few of you that have clicked on this video, I imagine. Do you want Lord Skitter as a rat colony deck? Relentless rats? Would you rather it was a generic token build that's black... Uh, a mono black control value build because like i've said a few times here i'm straddling two different tactics and uh yeah it's not a good way to build decks really so you can all tell me what you'd like to see and while i'm rambling i suppose this can be a rambly video while i'm also waiting for my opponent to do his thing a few of the viewers have asked about the cat and uh it's been a month or two now i think since i told you about that i actually can't remember what i've told you we thought Lucy was a girl. Taken Lucy to the vets, found out that Lucy's a boy. Uh, it's not as obvious as you would think. So we're not stupid, honest. Metal Worker just revealed something. That is a Meteor Golem, which is good to know about. Urza comes out again. Um, yeah, had to take Lucy to the vet. Lucy is called Lucy because uh, it was a feminine name, but she was actually, or he was actually named after Lucifer from 
Disenchantment, if any of you have seen that on Netflix as well. He's a little uh, demon character, and um, our cat is soft as they come. So we thought it was a funny, ironic name that was not only feminine, but uh, an ironic name towards a cat being demonic when it couldn't be any further from that. The meteor golem being cast now, going to blow up the thrumming stone, most likely. And yes, it does. Um... Yeah, so I had to take the cat to the vet just to get everything checked out. Um, it's been chipped now, just in case it ever gets lost. Um, our address is obviously on that and everything. Let me play out my turn. My opponent was faster than I thought he was going to be there. Uh, drew into a swarm yard to regenerate rats. Play out the Lord Skitter again. And then I think I'll actually go for a pack rat here, because if we can start making copies of that instead of the rat colonies, they get buffed on their... Um, on their power and toughness as opposed to just the power so they'll be more difficult for our opponent to block um, let's keep our opponent from grabbing back the cyclonic rift although we do need to focus on artifacts as well because our opponent could fish those out of the bin for combos as well uh, get more stuff out of our opponent's graveyard again it can be the research thief I think so that they can't draw as much and then yeah our opponent can just chump block the rat colony so we'll pass at that um, yeah, I, I was looking at all these rodents and that made me think of my cat weirdly, which is why I'm telling you all about it now. So yeah, gone over the name. It's been to the vets, been chipped. Um, the vet saw that it had a herniated navel, which is basically your intestines coming out of your, um, your navel, your belly button. And, uh, that's quite common with young cats. Uh, the vet was concerned because our kitten was about six weeks old. It's obviously... It was malnourished, or six months old, I should say, and that should have healed over by then. The navel should heal over within the first month or two. Uh, but it was malnourished, really skinny, and had been abandoned. <laughs> so our opponent getting into a Jingataxius Progress Tyrant. Uh, let's just go for... Yeah, I don't think it matters doing the pat rat in response. Yeah, the vet was concerned with that and thought that it would need surgery in order to sort that out. But we kept feeding him and uh, getting him bulked up and uh, he's a good size now so been back to the vets to get de-sexed and um, the vet checked him out again and said oh he's fine he, he just needs the uh, operation for a chip and the uh, de-sexing activating Urza for the shuffle here and showing us an extra planar lens so obviously doubling up the islands with that Jingataxius will make another copy of that which is useless He's up against mono black, so we're not going to go after artifacts anyway. Yeah, so I went through the operation and everything. Um, didn't end up needing one of these surgical shirts. Had a little um, bald shaved spot on his arm, which was funny, where they'd injected him under uh, general anaesthetic. But yeah, apart from that, I don't know if there's anything to tell you. He's got like this uh, big tower thing now and, and loads of toys. It's funny, it's like he's a, a surrogate child because Cretin keeps buying him things, and uh, so there's all these like cat toys strewn about all over the house. It's as though we've had a, a kid or something. Anyway, I don't think the Gix is going to be relevant here, so I'll just discard Gix in order to make another pack rat. Yeah, he's got like a tunnel thing, a plastic tunnel thing. I'll try and show you all this as I'm, uh, as I'm doing this stuff on the video. Exile the Foundry Inspector from a rat entering. Uh, he's got all these like typical little mouse toys with catnip in them, and this big tower thing that's straddled between the, the floor and the ceiling, so he runs up that and there's a hammock on it that he loves. It's yeah, He's a pretty well-looked-after cat, if I do say so myself. But other than that, yeah, I can't think if there's anything else to tell you about it, really, for the few of you who were asking about that. Anyway, I'll stop rambling now and get on with the game. We've got Rat Colonies will cost one mana with the Jet Medallion. So, yeah, if we convert... Do we just want to discard rat colonies to the pack rat though? Yeah, let's convert this anyway. So that makes four black mana. We can go Necropotence, because we do want to be refilling our hand. And then we can go for the Jet Medallion. Oh, of course, that gets countered by the Jingataxius, doesn't it? So let's just go Necropotence and refill our hand here. I want to hold up both the Swarm Yard and at the end of the turn maybe go for the pack rat instead. So it's five life into Necropotence. And we're just pointing our nukes at each other at this point, really. The rat colony gets buffed up to a 7-1. And the pack rats are 6-6s, six exiling pretty much all of our opponent's graveyard here. It's just a case of trying to get our army bigger than our opponent's, which we should be able to in the long run. Our opponent's down to no cards in hand. 
All depends on how good his top decks are, really. But our top decks are going to be faster with a Necropotence. It's all just a case of hoping that we don't run out of life, which it looks as though we might. Just more card draw. Oh, there's an Inventor's Fair, which I didn't notice as well, so our opponent gains life from that and can tutor for something relevant. And we'll get two copies of it, thanks to the Jingataxius. Master of Ethereum has entered the Revealed Zone, thanks to the Metal Worker, so that's just going to be a big creature. Casting it into the Jin means that he wants two copies of this big creature. So there we have a couple of 12-12s. The Construct is a 13-13. And then Reconfigure going on to the Jingataxius. <laughs> and then there's, that's a pet card of mine, I really like Sharding Sphinx. So that comes into play. And this is obviously a more casual version of Urza, which we did ask for. It's just um, still way better than anything we're doing. But I'm getting a good feeling for this Lord Skitter deck. I think we can make it better. Our opponent goes for the Urza activation again, and it is a Forsaken Monument. They don't have that many colourless lands, although that counts permanence. They do have the Thran Dynamo still. can obviously tap this for mana regardless, thanks to the Urza. So now, do they want to turn in sideways with a 17-17? We can reanimate or regenerate a creature that we block with. Okay, they've got something else for us. Of course, just going for the activation on the Urza again. Uh, that is an Academy Ruins, which they do play. Nothing to grab back out of the bin, thanks to us exiling stuff with our commander. Now then, depending on how attacks go here, we can just chump block and regenerate. It does mean that we don't get to do the pack rat thing thanks to wasting mana. We do get to do the pack rat thing because our opponent does not decide to swing in for whatever reason. So let's discard uh, the read the bones should be fine. I think we're just going to be dumping our mana into the pack rat because we can keep our hand full with necropotence. Exile the last card from the bin when pack rat enters thanks to our commander. So no draw step thanks to necropotence. Drop a swamp. Uh, and then we make 5 mana with Cabal Stronghold. Then we'd have 1, 2, 3 mana left with a black and a swarm yard held up. Our sorceries get countered anyway. So yeah, I think going for a couple of rat colonies is fine here. And we'll just discard the instants and sorceries. And then with 1 black mana floating we'll just um, go for a pack rat activation now. Get rid of the Thought Seize while our opponent doesn't have a card available in hand. And it would have been countered by the Jingataxius anyway. This is instant sand sorceries, isn't it? Yeah, artifact instant and sorceries that it counters. So we're going to go down to our own Necropotence anyway, but we're just playing this out for the fun of it. This is the first time I've played with the deck, so... Or the first uh, actual game that we've got, so... It's good getting a feel for it. So yeah, be sure to let me know in the comments how you'd like me to actually build this deck if you are interested in it. We get another token, so yeah, as Rat Tribal goes, it is pretty good. I mean, the pack rats are 11-11s now, 12 power on the colonies. Even though they've only got one toughness, I think I do prefer Rat Colony to Relentless Rats. The difference between a 2-mana creature and a 3-mana creature is massive. Uh, okay, not getting into any Aristocrat stuff there, unfortunately. That's pretty much what we're hoping on to keep us in the game here. Not tutoring with Inventor's Fair yet, our opponent gains another life. Yeah, I think in order for Relentless Rats to become relevant, we need something like Bontu's Monument or Jet Medallion in order to make them cost two. And you can't guarantee getting into that kind of cost reduction. So having to cast three mana rats consistently is uh, it's going to really slow you down in 1v1. Plus with this only having one toughness, it does make it more difficult to swing in with. But it makes them skull clampable as well, which is relevant. Because it's one of the few means in black of actually drawing cards without taking life, which we're seeing the relevance to here. <laughs> and there is a Curse of the Swine. Our opponent getting straight into the top deck. So, uh, yeah, both of the copies targeting, well, everything really. Not bothering going after the, uh, the rats that can't block. Our opponent definitely gets us here, just straight off the top with the Curse of the Swine. We had no chance against this uh, type of deck anyway, like I've said a few times here. So, yeah, we'll go for discarding with the pack rat just for the fun of it. We do end up with a bunch of boar tokens that we can chump block with at least, but yeah, definitely think our opponent has us here. Still keeping hold of a pack rat could be relevant though, because obviously we can keep going with all these big creatures. A mirrored in besieged straight off the top, and probably just go for the mirror generation with that. 
they have named Mirren, so yeah, whenever they cast an artifact, they get a mirror. They do have a flyer over here, which is relevant. So we're going to be down to four life. Four life with the Necropotence in play, which isn't where you want to be typically. Could swing in towards us. We could maybe... It's not likely that we'll kill off any of their creatures with our boars, because that's our only means of life gain at the moment. So at the moment, what I'm thinking is Rat Colony with something like Grave Pact and Dictate of Erebos and making the rats unblockable and stuff. And then if we can fit any aristocrat effects in there, then maybe that would be of some use. Anyway, seeing a burnished heart in the exile zone from the Urza player will make a mirror if they decide to cast that. Psymaster Thopterist off the top. And then burnished heart for free into the Psymaster Thopterist and the Mirrodin Besieged. Gain two life from the Forsaken Monument. Now silver mirror off the top as well. Okay, and can't help but think my opponent's playing with his food here. A Mox Opal off the top. A Consecrated Sphinx, we're not drawing cards at the moment, so that's actually pretty useless to him, other than it being a flyer, but it's not really relevant here. Okay, so swinging in, the only creature he's going to get through with here is the Sharding Sphinx. So we'll gang up on the Meteor Golem so that we can at least gain one life, but it's not going to be of any relevance here. I mean, we could draw with the Knight's Whisper, go down to two and wipe the board maybe. Don't think we have Damnation in the deck though. So just blocking like that and holding back one boar and a pack rat. And that has our opponent lose a bunch of life because of our boars going down. Not that it's of any relevance because we haven't actually done anything to our opponent this game. And uh, we gain a life from the meteor golem going down. Not drawing into a card. We go down to five there. Play a swamp. Uh, where we can go down to one if we tap down the Ancient Tomb, make a bunch of black mana into Knight's Whisper. Don't see what we're going to do here. Argument to be made for is going for Woe Strider first, so that we can scry some stuff away. But that just swallows up three mana. If we're going for a board wipe anyway, I'll tap down the Swarm Yard. Make six mana with the Cabal Stronghold. And yeah, we'll go for Woe Strider. Make a Goat Token when it enters. And then let's sacrifice some of these rats because they can't block anyway, so they're pretty useless to us. Opponent loses a life. I mean, you get the idea of what we wanted to do here, but we're nowhere close to our opponent. Uh, Bastion of Remembrance showing up way too late. But like I said, you get the idea. A swamp on top. Put that on the bottom. Another swamp. So going for the Woe Strider was relevant, apparently. Uh, yeah, like I said, if we're going for a board wipe anyway, we might as well sack pretty much everything here. Another swamp, a rat colony, another rat colony, so I'll put that on the bottom now. Uh, the signing blood is going to get countered, so I'll point that at ourselves. I suppose we could have gone for the tragic slip instead. Uh, Knight's Whisper, obviously just doing this for the fun of it. Uh, our opponent will draw four cards to our two, but we can go for, again, just for the fun of it, Inquisition of Kozilek to see what he drew into. And, <laughs> yeah, we see... Uh, Thought Monitor, a Virtue of Knowledge, Collector's Vault, and a Ristic Study. So get rid of the Study. And let's draw some more with this Altar's Reap. Sacrificing the Woe Strider. That will draw us two cards. Gets us into another couple of lands, and another four cards for that Consecrated Sphinx. So we'll go Tragic Slip onto the Consecrated Sphinx as an Active Defiance on the way out. And then speaking of which... We'll gain a life to the Meat Hook Massacre. And let's lose two life to the Necropotent. So, yeah, a little bit of an exhibition match there. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. And um, hopefully I didn't ramble too much about the cat and everything. Yeah, if you've got some opinions on how I should build Lord Skitter, if you want to see Relentless Rats or you don't mind seeing Rat Colony again, then I think we can actually do something with this deck as a Rat Tribal deck. I just don't imagine that this deck and this video will be all that popular. But of the few of you that do decide to click on it, be sure to let me know because I actually don't mind the idea of this deck now. I, I just like the aesthetic of the commander itself, I suppose. Anyway, let me know. I'm Tribal Kai. Thank you for watching.